In the January 10th, 2021 developer stream of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, the upcoming MMORPG by Visionary Realms, we were introduced to Hayuka, the Azure Queen. This previously unknown figure in the lore of Terminus took center stage in a storyline that showcased not only Pantheon's major systems, but more subtly, J.N. Gerhardt's penchant for weaving character development through layers of content. In scraps of paper, faded memories, and ambient environmental design, the Azure Queen emerged from the page as a character of great significance in the lore. In this video, I'll do a deep dive into what we learned about Hyocat, the Azure Queen, and also reveal the lore that suggests her connection to Terminus may be more than you think. So settle in, and let's explore the visions of the Azure Throne. The Fortress Devire is the setting for this tale, and almost immediately we're given a very significant piece of information by Macklin Jape that suggests it's not just another outpost or family stronghold. We're told, what is this place? Is the place we grow food a garden? Is the place we eat our food a table? Is the place we sleep our home? If that is so, what is the place a thief sleeps after she eats the food she's stolen from another lady's garden? What sort of dressing will she use for that matter? I would use a dash of holy water if I was a thief. Reading this closely suggests that the Fortress Devire is a place usurped, not of the original owner, maybe stolen. Later on, Diogracius, the Azure Isle historian, welcomes us with greetings, welcome to the Fortress Devire, pausing to recollect, as if it once had a different name, something a historian would surely know. Also notice Macklin Jape's reference to the proverbial thief and their victim, they're referred to as she and a lady. And lastly, to make the stolen item palatable, why would holy water be needed? The suggestion being that the keep was acquired or is held through cursed means, demonic influence, or the power of undeath. Let's try to answer some of these questions. Firstly, who could steal an entire keep? A master thief, no doubt. And in the lore, we know of one such thief. The tale of the signature character Janice Sova is strikingly similar to what Macklin Jape described. Tasked with ousting a noble lord from his keep, Sova does so through subtle infiltration of the lord's mind, eventually leading to a bloodless coup and accomplishing his mission. The tale also reveals Janice Sova is a member of the shadowy organization known as the Dark Traders. To refresh your memory, Dark Traders are creatures of shadow and subterfuge, sleeping in the day but never truly able to rest. They would prefer Terminus Revolve from night to night, the sky providing a moon to each. Upon being welcomed to Fortress Devire, we're asked by Lieutenant Sonia Jago, what type of training are you seeking at Fortress Devire? One of the responses is the dark trade. We don't get to see what information that response would have elicited, but even so, it establishes that Fortress Devire and Janice Sova are linked. Lastly, remember the thief being referred to as she? Well, according to Janice Sova's story, there is precious little about the man that is verifiably true starting with the claim by some that he's not male at all. Although, there may be a more fitting reason for this citation. Let's continue. Working from the premise that Fortress Devire was taken from its previous owner by Janice Sova, the question then becomes, at whose behest was he acting? In the September 2019 newsletter, Sova is subtitled The Queen's Thief and described as the duplicitous master of spies for Queen Amenthiel. On a table in the fortress lies a book whose title adds to the intrigue. The book is noted to be a fictional series titled The Two Queens of the Azure Throne. It appears to be a collection of local folklore and includes artistic depictions tracing back several centuries. We know from the stream of Hyoket, but who is the other queen? If Janice Sova was in the employ of Queen Amenthiel, it's certainly possible she is the other queen. Further to this, we later see a curious ornament, which is described as a marble sculpture depicting two female warriors in combat. This piece perfectly captures the moment of one triumphing over the other. A depiction of the two queens, Hyoket and Amethyol, fighting for control of the Azure Throne, perhaps? If so, then we must ask, what is the Azure Throne, and who sits upon it now? The color Azure is heavily represented throughout the stream, most notably in the crystals in the caverns below the keep and the Azure Orchids we see in Diogracius' study. Let's start with the Azure Orchids. We learn a lot about these crystalline flowers from the historian's efforts. Diogracius notes, unlike everything else in Fortress Devire, this orchid feels warm to the touch, yet it leaves a chill in my bones. 
When I hold it close to my ear, I can almost sense a rhythm, even a voice. But the more I try to hear, the farther it moves away. We observe the same properties later when a voice is perceived upon touching an orchid. It states, a feminine voice echoes a faraway tune. So, my garden. If we assume that these are the words of Hayoka speaking to whomever touches the orchid, it may be that this is the domain of she who sits upon the azure throne. The queen, like the flower, whose beauty is fabled to inspire moments of reverie and even intoxication. Diogracius seeks and is granted permission to plant the seeds in the cavern below the fortress. He later notes in his journal, whatever presence lives inside them, inside many things on the Azure Isles, seems to have total authority over them. Though I trained these orchids and gave them everything they needed for their survival and to flourish, they know I am not their true mother. The historian's unraveling continues as he notes, It is as if a small orchid bud was placed inside my soul and has been growing since the day I first entered the caverns. So if we allow that the Azure Orchids are a conduit for the Azure Queen, there's an even more mysterious aspect to consider. In the atrium at the entrance of Black Rose Keep, there exists the Rose of Kindred Hearts, a beautiful creation of colored glass of Archai make. While described as being made of glass, one can see how it resembles the Azure Orchids. With the Rose of Kindred Hearts being of Archai design, it's also curious that within Diogracius' study lies a body of which we perceive the skull is heavy, feels more like stone than bone. Had Diogracius made the connection between the Rose of Kindred Hearts and the Azure Orchids? If so, he neglected to note it, but then again, perhaps his new queen forbade it. As he states himself, I carry my purpose buried in the depths of my chest. I speak of it to no one but myself and to the one true queen. Beyond the Azure Orchids, in this tale, there are other echoes of Black Rose Keep, another fortress with a shadowed history. Black Rose Keep's story, of which Thronefest's queen is of no small part, is relevant to our exploration. In short, Black Rose Keep was founded as an act of rebellion against Thronefest by Amani Karos, a former noble of the empire. There are hints that an affair between Karos and Queen Amanthiel were at the root of his exile. Yet the banners of Black Rose Keep appear throughout Fortress Devayer, even though it's explicitly stated that it's the most distant outpost of the Thronefast Empire. Were the same seeds of rebellion, quite literally, planted years ago at Black Rose Keep? An attempt to rekindle the flame in Karos' heart by his former queen, perhaps? Recall the words of Sidara Kitts, who stated, Each of the drones mutter broken, lovesick phrases, things you'd expect to hear from a swooning boy at an academy. Recall that we previously speculated that Fortress Devayer was stolen by Janisova, the queen's thief. It may be that the Count Galleon Devayer's final state enthralled and seated beside his queen on the Azure throne, was that which was attended for Amani Karos. So where does this leave our tale? When confronted, Hyoket, the Azure Queen, speaks, and we learn the depths of her power. First, she commands us to fall into her darkness, and calls upon the legends Count Galleon followed into her embrace. She calls out, Oldu, Veron, come to the aid of your beloved. The legends Galleon studied as a boy, Veyrun Emberfield and Oldu Twati, Alice German and Parak Senje come to her aid. Does the Azure Queen have access to these figures through Galleon's memories, or perhaps they also fell into her embrace in ages past? She continues, By the seed, your power will bloom. Now, come, my beloved, defend your queen. In the face of near defeat, her final words are, Insufferable, I will not be denied. Bow before me, break under my will. This suggests that the Azure Queen is no recent phenomenon in Terminus, having lured legendary warriors and others to her throne for centuries. The only real question that remains is whether the two queens of the Azure Throne are two sides of the same coin. I hope you've enjoyed this lore exploration. It's my hope that by engaging with the lore of Pantheon, it helps us all stay a little Pantheon patient while the game's in development. If you want to support that process or just learn more about the game, head over to PantheonMMO.com and check out the pledges available. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for this channel as I've got plenty more lore videos on the way. But until next time, cheers, and thanks for watching.